Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. I've just been out to um, the site of the wreck in Fenestra and, and finished clearing up all of the um, all the spaceship parts that were left out here. So now all that we've got left is the uh, the Stargate thing that was left before. Um, and I decided that'd be a thing that was worth doing off stream because I'm sure nobody would want to watch me uh, wandering around picking up bits of spaceship for half an hour. So all that's left now is this damaged spaceship console that for some reason I was unable to pick up. But that's that's got ever, absolutely everything else. And so now we're uh, I'm flying back to, back to uh, back down to Norvis, um, which took about take a few minutes to get there, um, to see what else needs to be done. So since the last episode, well, um, the biggest thing I've done I think is expand the train system in Realm of Shadow. So now instead of before we had yes I had all of these different um, outposts out here with the, with the mines on them, but I only had the one train that was going around trying to c carry the. Um, uh, the Naquitite from each of those to over, to over to the crushing facilities here. Whereas now I've expanded it out a bit, so we've now got um, three trains carrying solids and then one for, just just one for the acid, and that should be plenty. Why is this one complaining? I don't know why. It's got it's got full fuel. It can uh, it can shut up, and and, and I, I don't really care. So it looks like we've actually now got to the point where we've got a massive backlog of the uh, crushed Naquitite. So I think that probably means it's time to stick in another spaceship. Where are the ones that are flying back and forth? Okay, so here comes the. Um, here comes one of the uh, the long range ships coming out to pick up some more uh, more Naquium. It's it's about um, eight minutes away. Oh, seven and a half minutes away. So maybe we'll have a look at that before the end of the uh, end of this episode. But uh, maybe not. But as it is, it should should turn up and then be able to offload all of this these resources very quickly. Fill up very very quickly with the crushed Naquium because we've got enough in these in these two warehouses here to fill it up completely. So this has actually got to the point I was sort of trying to get to earlier where the ships will be able to just land, fill up, and go again. So that's that's quite that's a massive improvement. I've also put in some of some extra um, supplies of um, brought over some extra uh, rockets and probes over to here, so we can we can start launching those and get the um, get these uh, data cards out a bit more efficiently as well. So that's uh, that's going to help a lot as well. And as as I dis described before, this is linked up to this inserter here. So the inserter won't won't load any uh, rockets or probes into here unless this belt is empty. This or this part of this belt is empty. And the idea of that is to stop this filling up completely to beyond uh, beyond 100% and wasting the wasting the data cards because those things are quite expensive. And I'm, I don't want, yeah, so I don't want, definitely <coughs> definitely don't want to waste those. So hopefully that means we've got a, now got a decent supply of um, Naquium back in um, Realm of Shadow, uh, not in Realm of Shadow, in Norbis Orbit. I'm not sure whether that's actually going to be the case though. Let's let's have a let's have a quick look. So we've got a spaceship here that's well, it's unloaded and now it's reloading with all of the um, the sulphur that's needed at the other end. So that's 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 okay, I guess. We're going to have quite a lot over there, but that's that's fine. These ships have been running back and forth. There's plenty of plenty of supply here to load those up. Um, so that's that's going to be okay. And down here we've got well, we've got 1,200 nac uh, actual naquium ingots. So that's yeah, that's been running really well. We actually now have a um, have a supply of naquium available, which is good because over here we are getting through uh, quite a lot of it. Now actually, the shortage here seems to be of the um, uh, of these these nanomaterials. So I'm going to have to have a look at that in the next stream. Um, but the naquium is actually running fine, and hopefully that means that down here we've got. No, we've still got a shortage of one of these types of memory cards. Um, so this isn't isn't quite working as well as I would like it to. What are we short of here? Oh, is it an Aquium? Yes, we okay. We have a shortage of Aquium cube, so I'm going to need to have I'm going to need to put this machine in here, which as you can see I've sort of specked out but didn't actually place because we've not got. Yeah, we're not we're not making the um, the Aquium cubes fast enough to keep up with the demand down here. So there's always something that needs to be done, but at least at the moment it is trickling through, and we're having a little bit of the, the uh, a few of these catalogs coming through. We've got about almost a thousand of them now. I did take. About a thousand, about the first thousand has been made. I sent a train over to get them manually, so we've now got quite a lot of those. Um, no, we haven't. We've we've used them all up, but we did have quite a lot of these over here. There we go. There's some some still on the belt here, and they're, they're coming in here, and that's allowing me to make the um, deep space science pack twos. And I've now made quite a lot of those actually. They've they've come out really really quickly. I'm impressed with that. Um, and we're now we're now able to do the uh, the more advanced sciences. So, in an attempt to start sort of using that and continuing to advance, I've invent investigated the Naquium tesseracts and arcospheres. Now, arcospheres I haven't done a huge amount on yet. Um, 
but I'm aware that I can I now I'm able to go out and launch another type of satellite which is rather expensive to make as well because absolutely everything is um, and start collecting those and I, I suspect this might be another one that launches from a, um, a probe rocket but I'll have to have a look into that um, and there's a bajillion recipes for doing various different types of turning at different types of arcospheres into other different types of arcospheres so one of the things I'm going to need to look into is trying to balance all of these together and make sure that whatever I need is always available so that's going to be um, interesting there have been lots of people telling me all kinds of horror stories about this so i'm expecting it to be um uh, let's just say i'm expecting it to be a challenge <laughs> while we're here in um in norbis orbit i should probably t touch on the um the module factory i, I set up in the in a uh, in, in the last um, stream so i've expanded this out a bit by adding in an extra station down here so we've now got we've got because the um the green circuits are high in highest demand i want to be able to unload this, those as quickly as possible so i've got four I've uh, got sort of quadrupled the amount of um, unloaders that are unload uh, pulling those out of the train. So we've got eight of them now in total. Four for the blue circuits and six for the red circuits. And that allows me to, in theory, produce these a bit more quickly. And looking up here, this seems to be going fairly well. The um, There are... The the, um, the bottlenecks appear to be up here on the tier four um, uh, assembly machines. So I should go in and put in a few more of those. But generally down here, all of these seem to be keeping up with the, uh, the demand at the moment. Now this still isn't exactly quick, I've produced a whole, well if we look at here, we can see in, in the time this has been running, it's produced 22 of these um, tier 8 modules, which is kind of crazy, but given the amount of stuff that's been pump pumped in, um, if we look down here I've made um, 1800 of the of the tier 4s, So and, and those have all just been compacted down and down and down into the 22 tier 8 ones, um, which means this is, yeah, it's it's working, but it's 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 just an incredible amount of resources that funnel into making making the tier eight modules, and I haven't even got onto the tier nine ones yet. So I did go out to Tulip with all of the uh, with a load of the uh, the parts I've been the modules I've been making from that, and I've done some upgrading over here. So now we have these three machines up here that are using tier seven and eight modules by the looks of it, but most. Um, except for this one, which is using tier sixes. So I've, I've, I've bumped it up as far as I can, and we, we're getting higher. So we're getting more out of it now. If you, if you look at this one, we see we're getting um, plus 86 percent productivity out of this this one machine. So this this single one is nearly doubling the amount of um, resource that comes through. So this is why I'm trying to do this. And then here we've got some higher level speed and efficiency modules in. So everything is using a lot more power and a lot more. Um, but producing a lot more stuff than it was before. And if we have a look at the power, how's that going? Yeah, we're, we're still... I've increased the amount of power available down here um, by putting in an additional pair of um, these... Uh, what do you call it? Heat exchangers and turbine generators. So now we're produ able to produce 3 gigawatts of power down here. And I've put an extra, extra load of... Um, uh, beam power onto the onto the emitter at the other end, sending through, sending through the power to here. So this should allow me to produce a lot more power which is kind of needed when absolutely everything kicks in at once. Um, but at the moment, well, I don't know, actually, we're not... It looks like everything should be running, so I guess I, I might have just over slightly on the power front. But as I continue to upgrade all of these systems to better and better productivity modules, the power demands are going to go up and up, so this is going to get significantly hungrier. I have it has has helped a bit actually that I've been able to remove three of these uh, furnaces from up here. So now we're down to only three of them running, and that means we're using sort of half the amount of power that we would be if we had more of them. But with the extra speed modules in here, they're using again they are using more power, but they're running faster. So in theory, I should be able to balance by having fewer of these machines, but with greater power consumption because of the uh, all of the speed modules in here. As you can see, this one's running at um, 17 times speed, whereas the ones down here that only have the tier six modules are merely running at uh, seven times speed so it may, yeah all of the all of these modules in here oh sorry no it's these speed modules in here that are relevant isn't it so they are running a lot faster because of these extra speed modules so it, it is it is worth doing um it's not up to the point where we can just pull a steady stream of um of uh, crush naquitite out of here as you can see this is running at I don't know, it's probably running about half capacity, I guess. It's just sort of very rough eyeballing. Um, but down here, yeah, we're it's getting it's getting churned through, and we are producing the uh, the resources at at a rate. <laughs> it's not quite as good as I would like, but it's but it's going through, it's flowing through reasonably well. I think I am still going to want to expand this at some point. But as we saw from the um, 
uh, supplies available up on uh, in Norvis orbit. It is currently running fast. It, we're producing it faster than it's being used. I'm just very aware that that's probably going to be only be temporary until I start trying to use more Naquium for extra stuff like those um, Naquium Tesseracts and goodness knows what else. But still, that is working. Speaking of resource production, over on Norvis, uh, let's just try and find the right part of Norvis. Um, yes, over here. I've, I've noticed that this core mining system seems to be running very, very slowly a lot of the time. There's, there's, the spaceships aren't coming in as, as uh, frequently as I would like with the uh, with the core fragments in order to turn those into um, in, in order to process those down and turn them into the resources I need. And that means that if having a look here, we've got 14,000 in this station, uh, 11 in there. 15, it's not too bad. 23, okay, these are, these are slightly better. These are at least above 20,000. The iron is doing really well, interestingly. Um, <clears throat> but even copper, which is being brought in separately, is... I mean, I would like these to be at around 40,000 or so um, in, when they're idling, because that means there's plenty of room for a train to come in, a couple of trains to come in and take some away. Um, so this one is doing very well. This one is sort of okay. This one is struggling, so I think I possibly need to put in another um, core mining facility on a on a um, on a coal planet somewhere, and that is something I'm sort of working towards. I'm planning to go out to um, what's it called Trellos, I think it is. Uh, this one. Which, oh no, this is another ore mine. This is another um, uh, oil planet. So that's not not what I was planning. I'm sure there was a planet I found that looked suitable and was a coal coal-based planet and didn't have too high a um, uh, threat level. Maybe it was Greenleaf. It's coming out here. But the problem is, a lot of these plant, a lot of these moons are pretty small, which means it's almost not worth going out and putting in these uh, the the, uh, the mining drills on them. Because the bigger the planet, the faster the core mining drills produce the resource. But for the really small ones like Greenleaf or um, or half the places where I've gone to, you just you don't get enough resource for it to really be worth it. Uh, Trellos actually is a decent size, so this this one, even though it's an oil planet, might might well be worth um, doing some mining on. So I think I'll probably come out here and investigate that. I have gone to Asalia and set up core mining here as well. Um, however, there's a massive, as you can see by the way, this is flickering. There's a serious shortage of power on this on this moon. Um, so at the moment, these are running very, very intermittently. They're yes, they are producing some resources, but it's very, very slow. Um, I need to, I need, so one of the high, high, top priorities is to put in a beam power system to get to, to fill up the, these um, the, the, these. Uh, to get these drills working constantly and get everything working nicely out here. Um, we are st do still do we got a decent amount yeah we got a decent amount of oil there and oh there's no f very little fuel being made. Um, okay the fuel production is is up and running again now so it's not quite as much of a crisis but uh, when I but when I came out here there was well if you look, look a bit further back there were serious power shortages going on um, as you can see by these flat tops here so. Um, oh, and the nuclear nuclear power plant has run out of f fuel somehow as well, which is a bit of a bit of a concern. That's not supposed to be able to happen, but it seems that if you can have a sort of a if you have enough of a brownout, it can eventually cause it to turn into a complete and utter blackout. So that was a shame. But now we've got things working a little bit better, but still not quite as well as I would like. Ah, and as promised, let's check out the ship on Realm of Shadows because that has just ha has arrived and now, as, as 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 I said, has filled up very very quickly, except for the um, 17,000 sulphur and 4,000 iron that are still filling up this warehouse that we need to unload as, um, before the before the ship can actually leave. But the hope is that those will all just go. Yeah, these that all just disappears into these warehouses down here. There's plenty of room for it all and plenty of room for all of the uh, sulphur the next ship is going to be bringing out with it. However, maybe this this might mean I will now have enough of a buffer that the next ship won't need to bring quite as much out with it. So we see, there's only yeah we're, we're showing a negative of minus 5.3 thousand there. We do still have oh we've run out of iron down here because of the, uh, the the ship hasn't been able to unload that because it's too busy unloading the sulphur. <laughs> Maybe if I open it up, that'll sort the sort it. No, no, still not even sort. So yeah, we'll. Um, this seems to be working quite well. In the future, I'm sort of hoping that once we've got all of the buffers filled up with acid, we won't need to bring out quite so much sulphur in, in these ships each time they come out, and so the whole reloading process will will happen a bit quicker. And at that point, I can start putting in a few more of these ships as well, so we can have a bit more. Um, so we can have a, a, a slightly higher throughput. But we'll see if that's necessary. So plans for the future. Well, I want to go out and. Um, and uh, build up some more um, core mining on as many different planets as I can. And I need to get a load of beam um, beam power out to all of these new planets in order to get them up and running. Naturally, going on and, and investigating um, the next level of, of, of deep space science is going to be a is going to be a high priority. Um, I apparently haven't even researched that yet, though, so that's going to be a, a thing to do. Um, 
and then there's all of the the Arcosphere stuff as well. And I want to come out and put in some low low power warning systems on some on a lot of my planets as well, because a lot of them have been having issues, but I've not really been fully aware of it because I've not been looking at those particular planets. So I think I think going out and having some alert systems would be quite useful. Otherwise, it's going to be just sort of carrying on much as I have been. So trying to get better, trying to get the uh, the Naquian production up a bit faster, trying to get more resources being pulled in everywhere, and then trying to continue on with the science. So, I, yes, I haven't had a huge amount to talk about this time because a lot of the stuff I've been doing has been time consuming, but hasn't given me an enormous amount to talk about. So I hope you'll uh, forgive me for that. There won't be a stream this week um, because I'm away on holiday, but new, um, new, normal normal um, service will be resumed uh, next week. So there'll be a stream a, a week on Wednesday. I hope you'll come along and join me for that. And the, um, the uh, Minecraft streams will, will again be starting up in, in a, just over a week as well. Uh, I do have another Factorio video ready to come out around next weekend, um, so that hopefully that'll be a bit of interest. But otherwise, the, the ch channel's going to be a, a little bit quieter next week than it normally is. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you'll be back when I when I return, and I'll see you then. <laughs>